Inside this room, all of my dreams become realities, and some of my realities become dreams. All my life, I've awaited your coming and dreaded it. I like them French fried potatoes. Insanity runs in my family. Practically gallops. I always have a wonderful time, wherever I am, whomever I'm wearing. This can't be happening, man. It's been happening. Rolling along, uh, we're uh, getting into this uh, ranked choice voting. I've been talking about it this morning uh, because, and, and quite frankly, because Senator Michelle, our uh, Melissa Lopez Franzen told me last week, last time she was on, we're going to cover this, and I better know what I'm talking about. So I've been reading up on it, trying to. Uh, no expert by any means, more questions than not. And she said she'd be bringing us a guest in today. Uh, Senator Franzen, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. And I'm not an expert either. I'm a newly minted board member of Fair Vote Minnesota, which is the nonprofit that has been a nonpartisan nonprofit working on this for the last uh, decade plus. And uh, after I left office, I was asked to work on this and I've, I've been exposed to ranked choice voting um, through the last 10 years before I worked at Target and Target at that point uh, was very much involved in this conversation about bringing ranch choice voting. Now we have it in Minneapolis and St. Paul. We also have it in what used to be my district, Bloomington and Minnetonka, and we have it in St. Louis Park. So we see the catch up and people are in, in localities are starting to pass this um, and doing it for local races. Well, not all, all localities can do it because um, we have to have a local options bill passed through the legislature this year to allow for um, non-statutory states to be able to um, be able to do this um, and request right. it if, if they so that, choose. That is so many big words. Thank you. Uh, Stan Lockhart joins us. You invited him. Uh, introduce Stan for me, will you please? So Stan, um, we know each other through this work, but we don't know each other personally yet. Uh, and we, we thought we'd be better served having a robust conversation about an issue on election politics that is actually um, brings different sides of political parties sure. in this case, Democrats and Republicans. And and uh, Stan, correct me if I'm wrong, you were a former chair, GOP chair in Utah and have worked on this and um, have exposure to it at the local level in Utah. You have a few pilots going on right now. So anything else I, I, we should tell our audience about your background here on ranked choice voting and, and your work? Yeah, I think my uh, wife and kids would say I'm a great guy. So maybe we could well, add let's that, throw that on there. I, I'm no, I don't judge so easily. We'll find out by the end of this before I jump <laughs> on that bandwagon. Uh, let me ask you this. So when I looked at this question and knowing you're coming up, Senator, my first question was, why? Why do we need such a thing? And here's where I, my Al look at it. And I'm going to use it on more of a, uh, on a, let's say, the governor's level. Back in the day, it's always really nip and tuck. Who's going to win? Who's not Republican or Democrat? And then you'd get in a legalized marijuana cat, right? He comes in, I want to run. And then that would siphon two or three percentage points away from a candidate. And you're like, hey, he would have won if this guy hadn't gotten in. And I understand how that can be different. Now, legalized marijuana, you guys legalize in Minnesota. We don't have that issue, I presume, anymore. But that was the only reason I could come up with why we would do this. A third party, another group of people can get in and take away, if you will, from the majority. And is that why we need this? Tell me why we need ranked choice voting, seeing that we're 250 years into this fine republic. And it seems to be working. Well, and, and I can give you the opposite uh example uh, if a libertarian party comes by and yeah. siphons votes away from republicans so well that, that's um, just yeah that's just my example is it can go yeah. both ways you can siphon from somebody but that's the issue right is we don't want a third party on some side to steal this one from us well let me start by really telling you know the the audience what ranked choice voting is and i'm going to look at my talking points to make sure i say this but basically you're 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 selecting you you're categorizing you're, you're ranking um your preference of of do i like uh, stan more than al and then melissa or do i like melissa more than stan than al so your vote um will go the tally would go for the first vote um and if and, and whoever in this election between the three of us gets 50 percent plus would win. So basically, it's also called instant runoff voting. So a lot of people understand that method, which is exactly the same thing we're trying to explain. It's a change in the ballot that allows voters to rank in order of preferences. So first choice, second choice, and so on. If a candidate in a single seat receives the majority, 50% plus one of first choice votes, that candidate wins. And if it doesn't, then you do that reallocation. And the candidate with the fewest first choice votes is defeated, takes gets taken off the the, the list and then those votes get recalculated to the second, third, et cetera. Et cetera. 
Um, so then um, the ballots now count for those second choices and the process continues until one candidate reaches the majority and wins. So essentially it's basically saying um, right now we have candidates that have 30% of the vote, including governors and win an election. It's not the majority of voters. It's not the majority of the people who are involved in our election process. And we want to change that. We want to make sure that every vote counts and that people who say my vote's not going to count because if I run, if I, if I vote, vote for that marijuana party candidate, um, I'm basically throwing away my vote. Well, no, you can still vote for that marijuana candidate and you can rank uh, the Republican or Democrat second or third and, and so on. So your vote really does go a longer way. It's still one vote, but it's doing the preference category versus just one single uh, a vote for one candidate in one race. Well, let's do this with Stan, okay? We don't know Stan, but Stan gets in this race between you and I. We're kicking butt. You and I going, do it, do it, do. But then Stan's got his little group of cult followers. They're going to say anything for Stan. We want Stan. We don't like these others. So they split their vote. They decide, well, obviously, Melissa will go with her. Al's third best at best, and they, they do that off. But the Al voters are real Al voters. They want Al or nobody. This is my guy. So they vote for Al. If they do not decide to vote down the line two and three, I get one vote. My guy gets one vote. Stan's guy gets three votes because Stan's guy keeps picking the wrong player until they get to the top. How You know what I'm saying? It isn't one guy, one vote. Stan, you're shaking your head. Did I describe that well enough that it makes sense that I then am forced to pick three people in order of preference or I don't get the same amount of voting? I don't know. Like, wait. Stan, am I saying that right? Yeah, I, I'll just tell you the one person, one vote standard that we have in this country, it's been ruled in uh, about a dozen court cases that this does not violate the one person, one vote. So your vote counts until it doesn't, until your person is out, and then it kicks to your number two. So it's just a fuller expression of voter will. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, um, but but it that's not true, voter, Stan. It, if I only want Al and I'd vote Al, but Al doesn't make the top three, I'm out of the game. Right. Uh, under today, so is, with, with plurality voting. If you if well, you vote for Al and Al's not part of the top three, you're out. But then isn't the easiest way to do this is to say, uh, and I say this, you, you guys run on this. We we go back, we have a runoff, if you will, the top two players then come back and you can have another vote. We'll go back and vote again. You're kind of having a runoff without me. I have to make up my second and third choice before I find out if my first vote is gone. Isn't the purer way then to say, Minnesota, you got to get 51% or 50 plus one, whatever in the world, you know how they phrase that. And we're going to play this game out until we get there. But that gives me the opportunity to say then, nuts, Al's out. Stan seemed like a nice guy. Now I got to study up on the Stan dirt. Nope, don't like Stan. Melissa, you know what I'm saying? Isn't that a cleaner look at this than because you we took play it with three? What's the limit? Everybody yeah, gets in this, and there's nine, 10, 12 people in, and you know, and Stan, you're shaking your head. It's radio. Work with me, buddy. <laughs> yeah. So, 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 Al, you're uh, 25 years ago. I was in your exact position. Uh, conservative grassroots activists brought ranked choice voting to the Republican Party in Utah. And if they were in favor of it, I was against it. And I just kept thinking, I know how to manipulate plurality voting. I, I run elections all the time and know how to get my people elected. Uh, what do they know that I don't know? Well, that was my biggest question. So they finally started getting it used in our conventions. I mean, they are the, they are the grassroots and they are our delegates. And so we started using ranked choice voting in our conventions and we turned 10 hour conventions into three hour conventions. What's not to like about that? And instead of people leaving throughout the day and the delegates winnowed down so there, there weren't very many people the last round, everybody got to vote. Well, what's not to like about that? And so as we started using it within the party, then the grassroots activists started bringing it to the legislature saying, can we use it in public elections? We finally got a, a municipal pilot in 2018. And in 2019, only two cities out of 250 in Utah decided to use it. And guess what? The voters understood it, they liked it, and 82% wanted to use it again. We thought, wow, that's a that's pretty cool. So in 2021, 23 cities opted in. 20 ended up using it because they had enough candidates. And we had we, another experience where in the polling right after the election, where 90% of the people understood it, thought it was easy to use, and about 65% liked it enough that they wanted to try it again. So voters like it, they understand it, and, and it empowers the voter. The voter gets a more fuller, a, to more fully express their will. 
And so as time has gone on, and I've just seen it work over and over again, the more the more that cities have used it, the more I become a believer that there's something to this ranked choice voting. Well, and again, I'm not just because uh, Senator Lopez brings it to me a fine Democrat. It isn't my reason against it. And again, I'm still trying to figure this thing out. They're much smarter people than me. But I am this idea that if the three of us ran against each other and Melissa wins with 31 percent or 33 and a half third percent, that that somehow is not a plurality. Because in the reality, then the 66 that didn't vote for her, we're going to get her. But by second choice, it doesn't necessarily mean, oh, I'm so happy my second choice made it. You get my point. I would so much rather, and I'm going to go to break here and then we can discuss that. I would so much rather it becomes a Stan and Melissa runoff. And now because you were the third horse, if you will, Stan, but you got enough to get there. Now I can zoom in on you and say, why is Stan my guy? And figure that out. I don't like not to me the simplest way is not the best way always if it makes it more complicated for stan and melissa to go head to head and now get al off the stage we're going to put these two on radio and have a debate i like that 10 times better than i didn't get to hear what stan was all about i'm going to I, you're forcing folks to go to everyone's rallies to see everybody's facebook page i don't want to go do that we'll talk with these guys after this on the ultra stop laughing at me senator call no, it's a, it's a great point. I mean, it does. It, 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 it is time of the entire year. A time when cooking is as fun as tasting. Mm -hmm. And the I'm only thing that can make it even better. Mm -hmm. is Still on uh, Facebook Live, if you're going to rant on me about it. I, I'm i not saying I'm against it, but you got to talk me into why we need it. If the problem is you want to get to 51, then the easiest thing is move the first election to October 15th. And then you got two weeks for the second Tuesday of Monday to pick the winner. I don't have a problem with that because so, to me uh, that's cleaner. We're we're going to go look at the poster child for runoffs, and that's Georgia. And tell me how that's helped Republicans. Well, again, I'm not. But my point is, I'm not saying it has to help Republicans for me to get behind it. I'm just saying that's a cleaner look, and that now it's him against her, or, and let's let's go get this thing figured out. To me, that's cleaner. Um, and I'll so, bring it up. We, I don't. You have round. You have roundabouts, Stan, in Utah. The roads, the roundabouts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Senator Franzen, and, and they, they put those things everywhere around here. <laughs> you tell me that they can't figure out a roundabout, but somehow they're going to figure out the four choices these grandparents. Roundabouts are the most unsafe thing you can drive in an outstate Minnesota. You're putting your life at risk, and yet we want them to vote three different ways this Sunday. I. I argue I wouldn't have been in an accident had I had I been had a roundabout versus the the T bone we got in Park. They <laughs> It actually comes down, you have just as many accidents. They're just not as hardcore because they're not right on. But to drive around here and to try to watch these grandparents try to get the zipper thing, we can't even explain zipper rules to people. Don't tell me you can tell them how to rank choice vote. Stop telling people they're that smart. They're not. And that's on Facebook Live. I know I'm going to get a lot of crap for that, but it's true. Sorry. Out in one minute. Sorry, Stan. This is what no, you get in Minnesota. I, I didn't really know what I was getting into this morning, but I'm glad I'm here. <laughs> I hear sarcasm when he says that. I don't think he's really serious. <laughs> Stan, have you been to Minnesota? Yeah, I have. In fact, uh, the year I was chair, we had our convention in Minneapolis. Oh, fantastic. I was very, I used to work at Target when that happened. I got to meet Laura Bush. It was really fun. Yeah, I like your uh, skywalks and the fact that you can stay inside all day. That's pretty dang cool. I'm very much needed. <laughs> Unless you're hardcore.
Are you kidding me? You know that comment you said to the radio? The thing that we got wrong? Clearly, Brussels sprouts are the worst vegetable. Call us and let the world know your thoughts. 855-257-7469. That's 855-OWLS-SHOW. All right, we've got with us uh, Stan Lockhart. He was the chairman of the Utah Republican Party. He is, as far as I'm getting, a, a pro this ranked choice voting. Uh, Senator Melissa Lopez France, and uh, she's on the committee. A fair vote? What do you call it? Fair? Fair vote, Minnesota. Fair vote, Minnesota. So she's big time on this. I go to the break asking just this question why? Why make it any more complicated than if you want 51%? We do a runoff, go to 51%. Stan says, ah, oh, people figure this thing out. Under Senator Lopez's watch, Minnesota all of a sudden got roundabouts everywhere in Minnesota. You can't shake a stick without driving through a roundabout, but you can't get through them with some folks and can't figure out the zipper method. You're going to tell me we got people that could vote because they got their driver's They can't do a roundabout, but they're going to figure out how to figure out one, two, and three in their voting card. I don't believe it. Someone tell me why this is a better, cleaner version than Al's. Run it off. Your guy didn't win. Look at the other people that are still in and then vote for those people. What am I missing? Well, I would start by saying, you know, people know how to rank. They know how, what their preferences are before vanilla, strawberry, and chocolate. All of us, even little kids, can do that. So we can be applicable in, in so many cases. Try it at Easter this weekend if you celebrate it with your family. Rank the pies, rank the salads, um, and find a winner under ranked choice voting. We have, if you go to uh, fairvoteminnesota.org, um, you can find out more of how you can do this. But uh, one of the biggest things that attracted me to, to this topic was, um, polarization and the gridlock in the legislature and at federal level and, and social media has something to do with it. So I'm putting that aside because social media fundamentally changed the way we talk to each other. But in a system where as a candidate, you have to build a coalition. I, I, I'm a pro-business moderate Democrat. I won uh, as the first Democrat elected in Edina. Uh, I had to talk to every voter regardless if they were rep Republican, independent, lib libertarian or democratic the same way because I knew that I needed people in the middle to, to vote for me. I have Republican support in my district. I had when I used to um, was still elected. Uh, so that type of coalition building was what I faced every day in my political career. Um, I think that's healthier because when I send a newsletter out to my constituents, I am talking to all of them. I don't talk about, I don't talk to people as Republicans, Democrats. So that coalition building, making sure that, that if they don't like me um, because uh, of an issue that they have other choices with other people. And then my, my opponent, would have the same level of civility running because of our district. I think that it bodes well for, for the for the country, for the state. Um, and we have people like Angie Craig and Dean Phillips supporting this at the at the federal level. We also have um, businesses in Minnesota, uh, business leaders that are more Republican leaning who support this as well because but, they see how it changes how we talk to each other. But it's back to I don't want to say we had to go to the dumbest common denominator. But now you're asking me, Al, the guy who's just going to watch his commercials on TV and get tired of those on a national election like the last one we had, have to decide one, two, three, four, how many candidates I'm OK with rank those. Look at the governors, one, two, three, four, rank those. Look at the uh, Senate. One, two. I am going to have to do so much research to even have a clue. It's going to come down to I'm voting her because I like her hair color. She seems like a nice person. I, you know, you're going to down to this. You're asking the people to have to really step up to pick one, two, and three on five different things on a menu. And right now, Judge Shift Judge, I don't know. He's a judge. Let him keep beating. You know what I'm saying? I think you're giving the people way too much. Stan, am I missing something here? That was what we went to break with. I've got about and two I would argue up. you give more power. I mean, the candidates have to do more work, not the people. The candidates need to sell themselves better to, to the public. So that, well, I think it's Stan, more the who's who's got the more money. The money thing really comes in. But Stan, because there could be nine people running now, because you just might as well name a party and go get it. I'm sorry, Stan, go ahead. I'm taking over. It's my show. So, hey, look, if you had uh, seven, eight, nine candidates run. 20% of the vote get elected. I mean, how is that majority rule? But that, so, that my point is you can, if, if it's just a number saying we want 51%, at least restack the deck. Let's get rid of everybody who can't get to 25%. You know, I don't have a problem with your, your point of being a 51. My point is figuring it all out on one day when I might have to know 64 candidates. I'd rather do the runoff. It didn't work in Georgia for Republicans. We talked about that off air. Didn't work for Republicans in Georgia, but at least that's a fair look. It's me against him or her, and let's just figure it out. That's all I'm saying. And I'm not, I'm not poo-pooing it. Don't know where I stand. I'm just trying to figure it out. So, um, Al, it's about turnout. 
Where, when do we get the greatest turnout of voters? It's the general election. Runoffs have, have a fraction of the number of general election voters. Primaries have a fraction of the general election voters. Don't you want, don't you want the most voters to make the decision? But then shouldn't you with that, I agree with you 100%, but then shouldn't with you, we shouldn't have, right now we have a 48-day window. How do you do a runoff election with a 48-day window? Um, wouldn't you then have to go to one day, if we're going to do this, let's figure this out, because you can find out a lot of stuff about a lot of people of nine people in the category. I'm running out of time. I love having you on. I will promise you you'll come back. I'll have you back on, and we'll beat this horse some more. Fair enough? Fair enough. Fair. And there's the bill. You can always go to find more about the bill. Everything's on fairvoteminnesota.org and learn more because there's ask, they're asking really for a task force to, to answer those questions. How is it going to be implemented? What are the guardrails to make sure? But this is works. looking to get done. You guys, the Democrats, you guys want this. It's on, you guys have all three. Like this is going to happen, right? I mean, we're not going to, this, this is going to happen one way or the other. I'm just trying to that's simplifying the, the the legislative process. This is going through committee, and it's um it's very different than what it was introduced. So there is some you know the secretary of state is going to chime in. Um, it needs to work, so it's not going to be thrown down you know shoved down people's throat. It's going to have to work, and this task force would help. Well, I hope that this helped out in some way. I'd love to have you both back on again. I'm not trying to poo poo it. I'm just trying to wrap my head around it. I think there might be easier ways. And and again, I don't know how many people I can follow in one election. Thank you for coming on, Stan. Thank you, Senator Friends. And I really do appreciate you all coming on the program. Thank you.